Hello. Hello, beautiful people. And welcome to another installment of Coffee Chats. Ladies and gentlemen, all esteemed people, it is episode 40. This is the 40th episode of Coffee Chats. Can you That's believe it? Crazy. And thank you guys so much for joining us on this wild and illustrious journey. We're so happy. We're so excited. And in honor of our 40th episode, we have a wonderful guest joining us today. Actually, before we introduce him, what are your feelings about the 40th episode, Mackenzie? I mean, I feel like all of our guests are wonderful. All of them are honored in each episode. 40 is very exciting. I mean, look at us. Who would have thought we'd be here? Right. Right. Um, <laughs> and also, it also feels like it should be more than 40. It feels like we've been doing this more than 40 times. I know, um, right? I think it's the grind. <laughs> I think. But I feel grind. like for 50, we should do something particularly special. So if you guys have any ideas or thoughts or wants or desires, please leave them in the comments below or in the chat over here. What do you, what, <laughs> the episode? What do, what do you think? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm just super honored to make this milestone. Looking forward to the 50th one. And yeah, this is going to be a great coffee chat episode. And while we're at it, Mackenzie, do you have a beverage of choice? My emotional support water bottle. We're twinning. I also have <laughs> a support water bottle. <laughs> so without further ado, we're excited to bring on our guest today. Drum roll, please. Dun, 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 dun. Hello, Shim Jin. How are you? Girl, how are you? Kara and uh, Mackenzie. Oh my goodness, we're so excited to have you. Before we officially launch into our questions, would you like to introduce yourself to our audience? Uh, hi, hi, my name's uh, Xinjin Zhao, I, and uh, like many of uh, probably the group here, uh, I'm a, a recent uh, author, just published my book, just came out about a month ago on Amazon, and it's very exciting, go through the process, and of course, uh, uh, very exciting to have the actually the physical book on your desk. Uh, so uh, it, it's a wonderful feeling. Well, again, thank you so much for joining us. I mean, it must be pretty surreal to have your book out in the world. Absolutely. Actually, the first month, <laughs> like the launch energy is still very like warm and high, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Would you mind telling us a little bit briefly about your book? Yeah, it's a it's a book about leadership, but the title of the book is an Odyssey of a Self Discovery uh, on Becoming a Leader. It's uh, leadership is one of those things. Uh, if you a ask a hundred people, you you get two hundred different answers what leadership is. So it's not. Uh, uh, by the way, I recently retired. I retired not recently anymore, but I retired exactly one year ago. And this was my first retirement project was uh, writing a book about leadership. But the book itself really. Uh, partly about my learnings through my uh, global business experience, but more importantly, it's, it's the people I was able to interview through the program. I interviewed uh, a, a lot of different leaders in different fields, uh, different, uh, completely different professions uh, uh, about the leadership experience and perspective that they could share uh, with me. So uh, it's a uh, Anybody interested? It's on Amazon, and uh, so far it has received a wonderful review. Oh, by the way, I add one more thing. The book has been sold in people from 19 different countries bought the book so far. Uh, so I uh, have a pretty global, global uh, uh, audience. Many congratulations, Shinjin. Congratulations on retirement. Congratulations on publishing your book. And congratulations on selling it in 19 different countries. A lot of accomplishments just in the last year. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. And speaking of a global audience, we know that your blog on LinkedIn is very well read and it engages with a lot of people. So what exactly inspired you to launch that blog on LinkedIn? It's uh, actually, uh, it's, uh, it's, um, it happened uh, by very specific events. Uh, I, I was uh, managing a global business, uh, had a lot of uh, uh, traveling around the world. I probably traveled uh, 35, 40 different countries uh, uh, when I was managing the business. Uh, so obviously had a pretty large network of people. I was working with uh, all over the place, customer, business partners, uh, colleagues, uh, all over the place. Now, now, around 2017, I got a different assignment in the same company, but a different job. Uh, 
I moved to China uh, for for a completely different job role, uh, managing some capital investment project in China, uh, middle of 2017. At the time, I was thinking, what's the best way to maintain my network of people? I can't possibly send an email to any everybody. See, hi, how are you doing? That does doesn't doesn't work. So. I thought about came up the idea. Say, hey, maybe I should write something on LinkedIn. That way, maintain a you know active or passive uh, uh, network uh, of people. That's a one way of uh, engaging people. Uh, so that that's the original idea. So I start uh, writing uh, top different topics about uh, marathon running, about uh, business culture in China, culture leadership. Uh, uh, slowly, same people enjoy you know, reading it. I uh, feel the, the uh, more the more people read it, the more judicious I became in terms of actually writing something. And uh, by right now, it has uh, about the two hundred eighty two thousand people around the world uh, read my blog every week. Uh, so it's a pretty large network of people reading. Uh, it, it's uh, uh, I would say uh, no. Uh, it's not necessarily I know more about leadership than others. I don't think uh, that's the case. Uh, but to, to me, it's a reflection of two things. One, uh, it's uh, people around the world, everybody's interested in the topic. Uh, leadership is not, not a, you know, American thing or Chinese thing, or it's everybody needs, a, uh, it's, a, it's a global uh, topic. Uh, the second thing is the way I think a lot of book uh, is is very conceptual, and uh, my my writing is a, I consider very authentic, and uh, it's a, a story. So, so that's why people are interested in reading. It. So the more I write, it, the more people read it. That that's how I do the uh, large uh, audience of about two hundred eighty thousand people in the last uh, four five years, which that's is incredible. incredible. Yeah. You. That's really wonderful. And so aside from readership, what gets you motivated or inspired to write each um, each piece or each article that you put up? It's, uh, I, I see very, very often it's uh, uh, something uh, when I read a book, uh, when I read a story or when I go travel, for example, last week, uh, two weeks ago, I was in Mexico, uh, to, uh, took some photo of a uh, pelican on the beach. Uh, and I study what Pelican does, uh, does not. Uh, turns out there are some interesting learning about, so I wrote a piece about Pelican and the leadership, but why can't we learn from a Pelican about leadership? But, so it, it's uh, it's an ongoing thing. I don't have a defined, hey, this is what I'm gonna write this week. Or something come along, I write a short piece about it. Uh, so that that's mo mostly how I came up with the topic. Yeah. So leadership is just always on the brain and it's a matter of just applying it in different ways and putting yeah, that long information a, that's out there. That's a very, very good way to put it. Yeah. So with all of this information that you have in your brain at all times, it then one begins to wonder when was the moment you knew that you wanted to write a book and put all of this down in one place to give to people? <laughs> it's a... Uh... Uh, I uh, heard about the, the um, Professor uh, Custis program about probably six months before, before I retired. So I followed a little bit on, on the internet. Uh, uh, hey, what, what is this uh, program about? Uh, around the time uh, when I was retiring, actually, because of there is a larger following, uh, when people realized I was retiring, a lot of people asked me, hey, why don't you write a book? Why don't you write a book? Uh, uh, to be honest, in the beginning, uh, writing a book is a big uh, undertaking that I was ready for it. Uh, it's, a, uh, you know, it's a pretty big commitment. Uh, so I ha had a chat with, uh, with uh, uh, Professor Custer and, and basically I signed up the program the week I retired, uh, on March 1st. And the, that's my book started. So the, that's, that's the start of my book journey. That's so wonderful. I mean, it's kind of, it feels like a very culminating moment, like where you knew that you had all this information in your brain and then you retired. And I, at the very outset of our time together today, you said that writing your book was your first retirement project. Absolutely. Yeah. Which means there are more retirement projects to come, maybe? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so I guess that kind of presses into our next question too. So you have this blog, you have this mobilized community where you've been talking about leadership for a long time. You press into your book journey with like culminating a lot of these thoughts into a book. How did you then sort of meld the two together and leverage your LinkedIn community throughout your book journey? Absolutely. It's uh, actually I'll share. Uh, you know, the first, when people use uh, uh, LinkedIn, one of the first time people think about it, hey, that's a wonderful place to market your product and all that. But uh, uh, I would see I leveraged it in many different ways. Uh, I, I was thinking uh, when, when I uh, saw the question, you know, probably in four or five different ways I lever leveraged the community. First of all, because I've written probably, I don't remember the exact number, but uh, 250, 200, 250-ish 250 articles. Uh, many of them are leadership related. Uh, of course, I could borrow some of the content <laughs> to begin with, uh, rather than start from scratch. Uh, so that that's the first way I, uh, the second thing actually was a very powerful way I was able to leverage the, the you know, the pretty big audience was uh, when I started the, the, I think it was like a six weeks or four weeks into the program, I was talking with uh, John Saunders and we start talking, how, how do you leverage this group? He asked, it, why don't you think about, the, uh, no, you have a, some uh, conceptual idea for the book, but uh, if you have a statistics to back up your book, that would be much more powerful. So I, spent uh, uh, about two hours uh, with my son teaching me how to set up a website. And uh, so I set up a website uh, to did a leadership survey. Because I have this big uh, group of people, I could link that and tell the, the group I was doing a leadership survey for a book. Uh, and up about 650 people participated in the survey uh, in a relatively short time uh, of uh, maybe two months. Uh, I was able to actually get some very insightful information from the survey that became part of my book. That, the third way I leveraged the, the, the uh, LinkedIn uh, community was I was able to reach out to a lot of people through LinkedIn for interview. Uh, some of the people, when I was starting writing the book, I had a kind of a mental picture what kind of people I wanted to interview. But as soon as I started to, to interview or reach out people, I realized it's a much broader uh, community than I realized that I was able to reach out to people, artists, uh, political uh, politicians, uh, exec business executives, uh, so all kinds of leaders who are, uh, when I tell them I have a pretty large audience, uh, most of them are more than willing to share with me their leadership perspective, uh, their experience, uh, so that that's uh, that's another way. The the after the the book was uh, more or less complete or during the completion process, uh, I would see actually uh, people tend to go, hey, you must have sold a lot of book. Level. Turns out that the, the selling book uh, leverage in the uh, the LinkedIn probably is not uh, as uh, fast as you would have imagined. There are. 280,000 people reading my blog every every weekend, but 99.9% uh, .9 of people uh, like to read it for free rather than pay you 99 cents to buy the book. Uh, that's okay. It's uh, uh, the, the reality is most people are silent reader, but as far well as this, uh, actually, I get uh, you know, occasionally you get uh, comments back from all of the places uh, from. Uh, uh, you know, from the U.S. or from Africa. Hey, so one person from Uganda mm, said, commented one day, hey, did I read your blog and this is how your blog inspired by, you know, uh, the, the things I do. It, that's that's the rewarding part uh, of a share and engaging that community. Last few weeks, I have been able to leverage that community. So, uh, to be honest, I'm, I'm not trying to start a business or anything, but uh, uh, I, I give a, I've been invited to give a lot of talks about my book. Uh, so uh, typically I don't ask for money. I say, yes. you know, now I ask, hey, if you, if you think this book or the leadership is interesting, uh, buy, buy 30 copy of my book, give your employee. Uh, I don't need the book, you know. So that, that has been helpful in, in terms of uh, 
how how to continue to spread the word uh, through the community and how to uh, promote the book. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And on that note, I actually have a follow up question for you. So it seems like in your journey, you wrote a blog and then through your interactions with the blog and also as part of as like your first retirement project, you wrote a book. Now that you have this book, do you think or would you encourage other authors to start blogs? Like, do you think that having a blog plays a huge role in the maintenance of your platform? I, I would see a uh, blog as uh, it's a you know, uh, nowadays uh, as uh, as we all learned uh, very quickly the, the traditional business model or book writing model is they write a book then sell it. Uh, now the more the more you go through the process you realize that it's uh, you have to market the book before you write it, not after you write it. <laughs> but, uh, so in that sense, absolutely, uh, you should start a blog uh, if you can. Uh, what, one of the things what I find is uh, people tend to think about a blogging is, hey, you, you might be an expert in something, you know something you want to share, but that's uh, not, not true. Uh, it, it's, uh, I look at uh, the blogging more a learning experience myself it's, uh, uh, in two ways. One, by blogging, force you to think about this thing, getting clarity on topic, uh, you think you understand it until you put it in writing, you realize, heck, I don't understand it at all. So force you to study a subject, to study, study a topic. That's one way of learning. The second way, more important, is uh, actually uh, when you write anything you share right there, uh, people will comment, people will share their idea, their perspective. Uh, that's a very, very powerful way of learning. So a lot of the idea I write in the book, I can't quantify it, but it's people's feedback, people's comments give you very different way of thinking that brought your scope and the perspective, whatever topic you're writing. That actually leans really well into our next question. So we wanted to ask you, why is it important for authors to really engage within their community or pursue external accountability in this like creative process and working with their book. Like you've talked a lot about how throughout the journey you are constantly engaging with people. So, and this is, this comes back to the whole never write alone, right? A book is not yeah. completed by yourself. What are your thoughts here? It, it's uh, uh, absolutely, you know, it, it's uh, in the beginning, uh, oh, I, I assume that many first time authors tend to think about writing is uh, is an individual activity, but turns out uh, it, it's it's not. Uh, if it, in terms of the, you know, you, you use the word accountability, I look at it this way. Uh, I, I'm a marathon runner, so I, I run ma one marathon every year for the last 14 years. Uh, it's a very similar way to think about this. Is that on the one hand, you have to be motivated by yourself. Uh, uh, you have, so, so, uh, in a way, you have to have a habit. If you want to do something, accomplish something, you have to have a habit. Yes. You, something mm -hmm. motivated you start something, but you can't have a motivation every day. Expect the motivation is going to be there. It's the, uh, the habit that gets you going. Uh, that that's uh, it's running is exactly the same. A lot of the morning I don't feel like to get up, but uh, hey, I committed to run a marathon this year. I have to train, and it, it slowly become a habit. Uh, uh, so it's a natural part of your life. Writing is exactly the same. Uh, I, I think you know if you figure out figure out why you want to write a book is important. Uh, you know what what's the purpose? What's your uh, what's the objective? But once that's settled. It's really, it's a, it's a habit, it's a process to get, get you going. Absolutely. Without that habit that whenever you don't feel motivated, then it's just, it's not going to happen. Yeah. But it's yeah. far more likely to happen, yeah, with that motivation and with the, sorry, with that habit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I do have another quick follow-up to that, but something that you sort of shared in terms of navigating accountability and sort of cultivating that habit earlier on, you mentioned that as you, first of all, you've written 200 over 250 articles. So like not only has this habit been like an, an integral part of your writing journey in general, it's had like a very significant output. And in turn, that output has cultivated a global audience. 
you said that you started to write more as you saw that people were reading more. Did you find that you were shaping your content in order to specifically cultivate a global audience? Or did, was that something that just happened organically? I, I think it's probably more organically. I do uh, uh, try, try to think about when I write topic, uh, I don't want to write the same, you know, after, after a while you kind of, uh, uh, people probably getting tired of reading the same same concept from you week after week. So I do do actually writing different about, about business. Uh, occasionally I write my photography, I write marathon running, write leadership. Uh, it's uh, somewhat I tried to connect it. Like I said earlier, when I was uh, vacationing in, in Mexico, I put in a few photos about Pelica. I tried to connect it, that into leadership, but, I, I, but uh, it's more about the Pelica itself. Uh, uh, so it may make it a little bit more interesting for, for people to uh, see the different topic uh, rather than purposely uh, trying to trying to focus a certain thing. I'd see in the end of the day, it's uh, writing writing either a book or the, the blog. It's not about me. It's not about the, the writer it's about the, the reader you know what 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 the reader is the interest in reading that is an interesting point because i was having a conversation with an author the other day that was arguing that the way to sell books is by making you the thing that's interesting and this is especially true for writing memoirs um but for i think with your book for example like the content is really what drives um, drives the interest. But with that, we have an interesting question in the comments and I'm gonna spin this a little bit because I haven't run into a lot of authors that have used a pen name. I would say that 95% of the time the authors are using their real name. And so Shinjin, in your opinion, what are maybe the benefits of, of sharing your face, your identity, your life uh, and your true self with your audience? I, uh... I know that never crossed my mind, but because I, I've been writing, I think, you know, it's a part of my book, actually, the main theme of my book, uh, it's a self-discovery. It's it's about, you know, how, how to really get to know yourself better, discover self-discovery through, uh, you know, know yourself and know your value, know your strengths, weakness, and know your, how, how, uh, how you are being perceived by others. So mm -hmm. you have to, Put yourself out there, be vulnerable, and uh, willing to, <laughs> to to be authentic and transparent. Uh, I think that's especially a, true for nonfiction. Correct. Um, if you're yeah. writing a novel, that might be a different story. But uh, in my case, uh, I, I think that's the only way I could uh, connect with the people. This is truly who I am. Uh, I think uh, the uh, the fact that I, I put myself out there. That's why people people uh, want to talk to real person. I'll see even the book I put in a lot of uh, not just a successful uh, example, but uh, my failures uh, over my career. One of the quote uh, this is a review from a CEO. Give me a quote. Uh, I'll read it. The review uh, so most of the leadership books that I have read place the author or his subjects on a pedestal. In Shinji's book. You are reminded of that. You are reminded of their humanity and imperfections, which is entirely refreshing. I, I thought that you know, that's a, that's a, maybe a good reflection of my thought process of uh, why people are interested in reading the blog or the book. I like that a lot because I think that's the true nature of leadership is that like selflessness, that willing to not be in the spotlight constantly. And so I think that I, I would agree with that review that your perspective is refreshing. Thank you. Yes. And we also appreciate the caliber of like multifaceted vulnerability. So not mm -hmm. only are you sharing like a, an aspect of like part of leadership is sharing like a lot of different parts of you to show that a leader doesn't have to just adhere to this one strange mold. You could actually be like a very complicated person that does all these things like runs marathons and takes photos. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I, uh, I, I was listening to a, a podcast uh, uh, by uh, maybe a week ago uh, by a Harvard Business School professor. She was on the call, uh, Frances Frey. She's a fairly well-known she, uh, professor there. She said something that stri strikes me. She said that in a working environment, very often you are being viewed as a two-dimensional character. Mm. In re real life, you are a three-dimensional human. But at work, uh, people only see it. 
you know, right. two dimension of you and don't know who, who you know, that there are a lot of different aspects of you. In order to connect with the people, you, you have to connect people as a, as a human, not, not just a, you know, a face of who you are at work. Beautifully said. I mean, you kind of already naturally pressed into this with that line, but do you happen to have any final words of wisdom for our incredible audience today? <laughs> I don't have a whole lot of wisdom, but I'll share. <laughs> One thing I'll share is uh, if you're going to write a book or if you're going to write a blog, uh, uh, one of the things... Uh, just like anything, just don't, just don't start doing, ask just the how and the what. Start with the why. Mm. Uh, ask yourself, why do you want to write a book? Why do you want to uh, write a blog? The more you ask yourself, force yourself to answer that question, the more clarity you're going to have uh, going forward to make a decision uh, in terms of how I position this, you know, who is my audience. Uh, the sooner you ask yourself the why question, mm -hmm. I think that the easier it is the process to go forward. That's my and, two cents. And free yourself of the judgment of whatever that answer is. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Well, thank you very much for your time today, Shinjin. We've really Ooh. enjoyed your presence, your answers, your energy. And uh, we just want to thank you again. Oh, thank you today. for, for <laughs> the opportunity to, to be here. And it has been a wonderful uh, journey with this uh, com writer co community. And uh, I can't, uh, I obviously, I would have never been able to finish the book in a year without, without the support of, of uh, people like you and the whole community. Thank you. That has made me happy. And thank you for making the 40th episode. You know, that, yeah, it's a special. That much more special. Have you. Yeah, it's <laughs> excellent. <laughs> have a wonderful one. Okay. Right, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs> wow. I just learned a lot. I mean, 280,000 people. On a That's block. a lot. That's a lot of people. That is significant. That's, <laughs> That's a big That's a freaking deal. That's awesome. And sort of just, again, the, I was so incredible to hear how following curiosity and like responding to engagement is what cultivated the growth of that audience and also how that happened organically and how that sort of, how the blog and the book sort of fed into each other. And I really appreciated his advice about authors having their own blogs as like a, yes. me as a means of further expanding their platform. I might be taking that advice myself. We'll see. <laughs> I appreciated how very natural a lot of the advice felt. Like, let things happen organically. Ask yourself why. Like, there's there's not one way to write a book. We know this, right? Mm -hmm. And that was that was very evident in our conversation today. And I just, I enjoyed it thoroughly. As usual, I enjoy chatting with you, Kyra. So. <laughs> of course. Of course. You know, this is our 40th time doing this. And it just gets better and better every time. So speaking of more times and things getting better and better, if you guys have any um, topic suggestions for us, you know what to do. Be sure to yes. drop them in the comments below because we do, in fact, read those. And we have gotten some great ideas from you guys in the past, whether it's a particular topic, whether it's a particular person you want to see, whether you want to be on Coffee Chats. Let us know. And we're more than happy to open up a dialogue with you all. With you all. And as you can see, sort of dancing across the bottom of the screen there, <laughs> you can find us on Instagram. Um, you can find me yeah. at Kyra Ann Wrights, and you can find the ever iconic Mackenzie Finkley. Oh, at, yeah, uh, yeah, at Author M. Finkley. We're all over the internet. Yes, we're thank all you. over the internet. <laughs> so again, thank you so much for joining us on What an Upward. And, you know, enjoy your beverage of choice wherever you are in the world. See you Bye. next time. Bye.